Okay, here's the first look of the new KPO DX5000 Plus. This is a 10 meter radio, it is expandable. And it has a noise reduction circuit. If you look at the screen, you can see NR in the bottom. It has high cut, noise blanker A and L. All those things are on right now. So if I turn the noise reduction circuit off, which is function eight, the, I'm, go, whoop, I'm going by the channel selector. You hit function to cycle. Okay, here it is right here. I'll turn it off. Listen to all that noise that comes back. Turn it on. You can barely hear those guys with it off. Big, big difference. See if we can find somebody on AM. That's with the noise reduction on. Let's turn it off. You hear all the noise. Much, much more enjoyable to me listening to it with the noise reduction on. Reminds me of an HF transceiver with the noise reduction. Knocks out a lot of garbage that you really don't want to hear. Focuses more on the voices. And this is built right into this radio, so it, it's a really good option. I've never seen any other 10 meter radios have an option like this, so. Noise reduction makes a huge difference. I think this is a game changer as far as you know, 10 meter radios that you know you can uh, expand for you know 11 meters. So big, big difference. So uh, one more thing I want to touch on really quick. Again, this is just the first look. I have did like initial tests and whatnot on the radio. And I won't get into all that right now. I want to do an actual, like, real video later. It'll be a little bit longer. I'll go through and try to show you guys what all the functions do in the menu and everything else. But uh, the radio was doing about 12 watts dead key on AM. And it was swinging close to 46, 50 watts. Somewhere in that range. So I thought that was pretty darn good. Uh, with the dead key down all the way, which is the inner knob here, RF power, I think it was like 2 watts. And depending on what I would say, you know, the, the peak envelope power on the Bird 43 would kind of go from like 10 to 30 watts. Anywhere in between, depending on word. So, pretty normal for a lower dead key. And then on single sideband, the radio did about 40, 45 watts. That's with the RF power all the way up. With it down, it, it only did like 6 watts or something like that. So, it's fully adjustable. Um, frequency wise, you, when you convert it, which is all done through the front panel, there's no modifications done inside. Um, that's where you start and then that's where you end. So 
it still will do the full 10 meter band. If you want to use it as a 10 meter radio, you just simply reverse the process to, you know, add the other frequencies in. So what will happen is the radio will start at 28 megahertz and go to 29.7 and you get 40, basically 40 kilohertz on each, you know, alphabetical band so you'd get 40 kilohertz here and you know go so on and so forth up to 29.7 so you can do either or you may be able to reprogram the radio in the software to actually cover the full what did i say 25615 to 29.7 i'm not sure about that i haven't tried the software yet i do have cables that'll come with these um, I have three of these available right now, and then I believe there's five more available to me, so, but I will be keeping one for myself, so there's probably more like seven that are going to be available, so, um, frequency-wise, this thing's right on frequency out of the box, single sideband, I listened to it on my ICOM 7300, didn't have to touch anything, but it was right there where it should be on upper and lower sideband, on AM, it was like, on the nine digit resolution on my frequency counter, it might have been at the ninth digit, like a, a two zero, you know, so like if, if we were here, it'd be 2830500.20, which is pretty incredible for, you know, this radio being an all mode radio for it to be that stable and that much on frequency right out of the box, so... Um, there is no internal adjustments on the radio, so, you know, I will show the internal part of it later, but there's no trimmers, there's nothing to adjust, so for guys that would want to buy this kind of radio, um, and you like to experiment and do things, there's nothing to change, so, uh, that being said, there may be, like, a service menu or something, but, uh, as far as I know, I don't have that information, so, uh, I think the radio works great the way it is, so I would avoid you know, trying to figure something like that out in a radio like this, because if you don't know what you're doing and what you're changing, you can really mess it up. So I think that uh, they did a really good job setting this radio up. It works really good right out of the box. And, um, you know, you get a full amount of frequencies. Clarifier is adjustable. You can do that in the menu. You can set it up to do receive only, transmit only, receive, transmit together, or I think you can actually turn it off as well. So um, you got echo, RF power. Um, you can do a dual watch on this radio. You can do a scan. It has a Roger beep. The Roger beeps, uh, if you're into Roger beeps, I'm not sure if you'll really like this Roger beep. It, it's a little different. I have heard it before in other radios, so it's not really new, but it's not really something I would probably run on this radio. Um, again, the noise reduction is the, is the big thing that I'm really liking with this radio. It really quiets it down. There's really nobody on the channel 40 right now. Let's just turn the noise reduction back off. It's a bunch of static. So I have it set up right now to show SWR, so you could just simply, if you didn't want that, hit the button right there. SWR will show up when you key your microphone. One bar is a flat match according to what the manual says. So it doesn't actually give you like a reading, it just gives you a bar graph. And as you go up, it does say, I believe it said, I'd have to reference the manual. I'm not going to tell you guys something that I don't know because the radio is still really new to me. I maybe played with it for like an hour. So there's going to be a learning curve for myself also. I've never used a radio in this chassis before. I know this style has been around. You guys will recognize this radio when you see it. But this is a completely different board in this radio than what you've ever seen before. I haven't tested the receiver. I'm assuming it's going to be good because, I mean, from what I'm hearing, it seems to be good.
think you can get the A channels by doing the 10kc jump. Yep, it says 10kc right on the screen. I just think that that noise reduction circuit makes the receiver much, much more pleasant to listen to. It's not adjustable, that's one thing, like on HF transceivers, a lot of times you can adjust the level of noise reduction. This, as far as I know, isn't adjustable, so when you turn it on, it's the level it's at, but I think it's a good level. So that's it guys, this is the first look at the new KPO DX5000 Plus. Uh, here's the manual. I'll show you guys the box really quick here. There's the box. I think I showed a picture of the box on my YouTube post as well. Uh, it does come with its own microphone. Uh, I think it's a dynamic style, but you can go into the menu. You can select electric if you want to use one of those kind of microphones. Um, I'm using my NM532. It works great. The radio is 4-pin Cobra. You see here, standard, standard style plug, 4-pin Cobra. It's on the side. Uh, I did rewire my microphone to a 4-pin Cobra. That's why I'm able to use it. Um, so it sounds great with the radio. I'm going to do more testing and then I'll come back later on YouTube and I'll do an actual like real presentation video of the radio. But uh, first thoughts on the radio, I, I really like it. I think it's going to be a great radio. So what to me, what it gives me the appearance of is like an old style CB with some modern technology in it. But still, everything is pretty accessible right off the front. You got dials, and you got a few push buttons, and then you got an LCD display. But uh, the display is really bright, but it's not too bright. Like if I shut my overhead light off here, you have uh, the identification on all the switches and dials and knobs. Everything is backlit. So I'll be curious to see how this looks in the dark. I think it's going to look quite nice in the dark. There is a film over the screen. So I'm assuming if you peeled that off, it's going to look a little bit clearer. I don't know how that's showing up in the camera. But, you know, all these radios, when they come new, they usually have a protective film. And I'm not sure about the channel selector, if they have one on that or not either. But uh, I think that th this kind of reminds me of the older style radios with the green. I think it looks good. I don't think there's a way to change the color of the display, but again, I haven't played too much in the menu, so that'll be all stuff I'll, I'll learn later. So, uh, again, that's the first look. I think I've already said that before, but this is the first look at the new KPO DX5000 Plus 7.3.